That one ripped right center field. So much for settling into this game, Boog. No courtesy first pitch take right there. He was ready from the second he stepped into the box, got a pitch to hit, jumped all over it. I tell you what, that'll fire up the guys in your one in. As soon as that ball left his fingertips, it was trouble. Right on a platter, right down the heart of the new. As soon as that ball left his fingertips, it was trouble. Right on a platter, right down the heart of the plate. I'm sorry, but count a hitter is on high alert. This is what you live for to be in the dives. What a play! Love about this swing is he stayed tall, allowed his hands to go directly to the baseball, letting that bat head get. From Petco Park in downtown San Diego, Interleague Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Tampa Bay Rays and the San Diego Padres. And we'll be back with the first pitch right after this. And now, your 2027 Diego Just about set to go. And starting in this one, Kyle Harrison. And Singy, we were talking earlier about how he's doing a great job navigating through tough spots. I've just been so impressed with when it seems like there's more pressure, he's more calm and settles in. He's done an incredible job with runners in scoring position. Most guys, they get a little tight, they start to aim the baseball, but for some reason, he gets looser, the ball comes out of his hand with more life, and he's able to wiggle off the hook of you know, tough situations and get his team back in the dugout. So up next, Emmanuel Paquez. Swings and misses. That's strike one. Looks like he went up there guessing on the first pitch. It was going to sell out to it. Didn't make any contact, though. Next offering is foul back. Pajes at first, one gone. Pitch misses. It's a ball and two strikes. That's a really good job of laying off the 0-2 high fastball. It's going to make that pitcher really have to respect this hitter, even though he's behind in the count. And now it's one and two. Off the outside edge, and now the count is two and two. Got him. Two gone now. That right there is one of those breaking balls that you swing through and you feel like you should have done something with it or at least spoiled it away. But when it's breaking in on you like that, if the spin is tight enough, it can actually tie you up. Here's Manuel Margot. Margot. He swings and hits a fly ball, center field. And there's a hit. And in to score the runner from second. Just a careless job of getting it in from the outfield there. Comes through with the RBI. These days, most outfielders play pretty deep, and I'm not sure if that was a factor there or not, but off the bat, you're thinking it's going to be a pop-out, and it just kind of nestled into that spot where no one was able to get to it. Two outs, runner at first. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Brock Jones. That smash towards center. Oh, great grab on the dive. Throw, and it gets away. And he'll make it around a third on the throwing error. And he'll make it up to second as he advances on the throwing error. Just a very nice approach and swing right there to use the big part of the field. Everything was on time. He stayed balanced through the entire swing and just launched that one into center. Bottom four, digging in is the switch inning outfielder, Emmanuel Paquez. The wind of the pitch. Tapped at the plate, but it's a foul ball. Well, every pitcher wants run support, and having a lead is nice, but it can be challenging for some guys. I think keeping the mindset to attack instead of trying to be too fine and have too much finesse, go after hitters and get quick outs. 
Swing and a miss. The high heat, too much on that one. Now up for Tampa Bay, number 55. The 2 1. In the air, pretty deep out to center field. Makes the grab, and that is that. One left for Tampa. Two outs, base is empty. Manuel Margot up to the plate. In the air, out to center. Jaquez in position. He's got it, and that'll end the inning. Three up, three down that time. Man at first, Emmanuel Jaquez now at the plate. Who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Hit pretty well in the air out to center. Jones has this one sized up. And out number one on the grab. They've got a potent lineup. And when you think about teams capable of rallying from this kind of deficit, they're... So one out, nobody on. Next for the Padres, Emmanuel Jaquez. And it's fouled away. The 0 1. Ball one. One and one. Bounce to the left side. Williams sends it across the first. And there are two outs. Well, Boog, we talk about how the ball is coming out of the pitcher's hand. The way it comes out of his hand as it empties. Base is empty, one away. So next to the plate for Tampa Bay, Manuel Margot. One down, base is empty. Swing and a base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Having himself a really nice game at the plate. That's about as textbook as it gets. Got his stride and load out of the way early. He stayed inside. After four wins in a row, you start to think a little bit that you're on a roll. And that's the momentum that just takes on a life of its own. Guys start hitting up and down the lineup. Never know who's going to come up with the big hit, who's going to come out of the bullpen and get the big outs. But it's a good feeling, and you want to extend it. 7-2 your final here today. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon. from Petco Park in beautiful downtown San Diego. Interleague Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Tampa Bay Rays and the San Diego Padres. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. So almost ready to get underway and on the hill, Joe Musgrove. But, Chris, he hasn't exactly been stellar here on his home mound. Well, I'll say this. Every player wants to perform well at their home ballpark, in front of their fans, in front of the city. And you know this guy no different. He wants to be more effective here. So, you know, you look at the numbers. They haven't been great at home. I'm sure he wants to turn that around, and we'll see if he's able to start that in this one. Emmanuel Jaquez now at the plate as he swings through strike one. Hammered down the right side, but foul. Saying he wasn't very sharp in the first, got hit around a little bit, just wasn't able to locate particularly well. A lot of stuff for the fat part of the plate. Yeah, Boog, he wasn't fooling anyone. It's a tough place to be because it's not always obvious what adjustments need to be made. Sometimes it's location. Sometimes it's being too predictable. Sometimes you're tipping your pitches. He's going to... So digging in, Emmanuel Paquez. Number eight. It really feels like we might be running out of time before a rain delay is called. This rain is not letting up. Yeah, and if we do get a delay, the unfortunate thing is the clock's going to start. This one's into the outfield. Could be extra bases. Pajes rounds third, headed for the plate. Play it home. He's safe. And it's 4-0. A little more backspin on that instead of the top spin. 
He's jogging around the bases rather than pulling up at second. Next, it's the catcher for the Padres, Scott Manea. 0 for 1 so far. Struck him out looking. Oh, nice job right there. He struck him out twice. The pitch before looked like it was strike three. Doesn't get the call. Bears down. Throws another quality pitch for the strikeout. Now a check on him at second. Back safely. Bogarts, who wears that number two on his back for his idol, Derek Jeter. Rudder breaks for third. Oh, he gloves it. Throw to first. And very nicely done for the out. To the plate. Save. It's 5-0. Anthony Volpe next to hit for the Rays. Into center. Nice grab on the run. Out number two. It feels like we might be headed towards a rain delay if the weather doesn't ease up, Chris. Yeah, the umpire and crew are going to pay attention to how the weather is impacting this game. And the moment it becomes dangerous, I think, is the moment we'll be forced to take a break. Swang and a line drive. Base hit out of the center field. Just kind of slice that one into center. And now they'll have runners on the corners with two away. Really nice job of two strike hitting in that at bat. I could watch base hits like that one all day long and so could every hitting coach in the league. Just a nice line drive in the center. Top of the sixth inning and stepping in for the Rays, Kyle Manzardo. Musgrove back to work. And that one is lifted in the air. One up, one down. Well, on the mound, very efficient, able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at bat. Emmanuel Paquez, the next up for the Padres. RBI knock for him last time, now a chance to drive in another run. Roll to short, could be two. One at second. Plenty of time at first, that's a double play. Back here at the ballpark, we go to the top of the seventh, and here is number 55. Rips that one center field. Jaquez hauls it in, and there's one away. One out, runner at second. Here's the center fielder, Emmanuel Jaquez. One for three. And first offering is fouled off. Outside. Pajes over at second, one down. The next offering misses at a count two and one. Fly ball down the line. Lantigua on his way over. Brings it in with a nice run and grab. Two down. Now that's the catcher. Scott. Monday. Good win by six runs. Always nice when you can win by a touchdown or a couple of field goals. You want to keep that momentum going. Knowing the offense can score at will. Bring it into the next one and get another W. Six nothing is how this one ends. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew, I'm John Chompy saying so long. to have you with us today the finale of this three game weekend set it's the Tampa Bay Rays and the San Diego Padres first pitch coming your way next first pitch moments away 
on the hill here today. Number 60. And Singy, it's unique these days, but he's more of a pitch to contact type of guy. Yeah, Boogie, he doesn't rely too heavily on the strikeout. He knows he needs to miss barrels, get some soft contact, let the defense do work behind him. And I think a guy like that can keep a good tempo, don't give hitters time to adjust or think. They can move through a ball game, and you look up, they're in line for a quality start. We'll see what he's got in this one. Next pitch has popped up. Manzardo makes the catch inning over. But two runs for him, and they jump ahead. At the plate now for the Rays is the DH, Carson Williams. Well, the offense really struggled last night. I mean, it was awful. So I, I think picking up a run right. Base hit, and a run comes in. That's back-to-back -back singles for him. High fastball, even a little above the zone. Top half of the third inning. Digging in, it's the speedy outfielder, Steven Lantigua. Lantigua. 0-2 now. Here's a high fly ball out to center. And makes the grab. And there's one down. One out, base is empty. Emmanuel Paquez, the next up for the Padres. Swing and a miss as he was late. These guys have come out ready to swing the bats early in the count and swing it often. If you want to score some runs, have an offensive explosion, that can be a route to doing it. The wind and the pitch. And yeah, that's outside. Next offering upstairs. The idea was right, looking to locate that fastball up and in. He just missed his spot a little bit. Three, two okay. now. Really good take, especially with two strikes. The three, two is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. One gone runner at first. And now Teoscar Hernandez over to first, and he's saved. Paquez, the base runner at first with one out. Here's the pitch. Runner on the goal. Lays out, but he can't squeeze it. Flip to the pitcher is in time. And now they have a base runner at second. Well, there's a lot riding on that at bat right there. Nice job of the pitcher to bear down, make the pitch, get the ground ball. Excellent piece of work. Now the left fielder, Jackson Frazier. Grounded out his first time up. And now the lefty, runner takes off. Base hit into center field. And in to score the runner from second. Just a careless job of getting it in from the outfield there. Gets it done to drive in the run and tie it back up. Got a breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. Not a bad pitch, but he wasn't fooled or off balance. Stayed on the backside nicely and really just let that thing travel and square to that. Go ahead, run on base. Manuel Margot next to hit for the Rays. The pitch. And that one in the air center field. Haquez settles underneath it. Brings it in for the third out. The Rays strand just the one, so no change. So two down. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Emmanuel Haquez. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Haquez goes five feet, 11 inches, 22 years old. And he was born in the Dominican Republic. The 1-1 one -one is cut on and missed at a pitch upstairs. And misses inside. Where do you even begin with the talent we've seen from the Dominican Republic? Vladi, Big Poppy, Pedro, the list goes on and on. Next pitch three misses, two. and now it's three and two. 
Swing and a miss, and he got him. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and miss, and you walk off the field. Back here in San Diego, and now the center fielder, Emmanuel Jaquez. Baz, back to work. There's a strike. That's ripped into the outfield. And that's a base hit. Off to a good start with a leadoff nod. Well, the last 10 games or so have been anything but fun at the plate for him, so that one has to feel good. Everything was on time and fluid in that swing. Got a pitch he could get the barrel on and lined it into center for the knock. Those always feel good. Here's Teoscar Hernandez. The pitch. Runner on the goal. Popped in the air. Left field. Puts the squeeze on that one. One away. Good pitch. He just kind of had him out in front on that pitch away and wasn't able to stay close. Here in the bottom of the ninth, one out. So digging in now for San Diego, Jackson Frazier. Checks over to first, back safely. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Another throw, really keeping him close. Back to first. And once again, he's back in safely. One down, winning run on at first. Runner on the goal. On the ground, out to short. Can't glove it cleanly. To first, and he beats it. Everyone's safe. Hard to tell exactly what went wrong right there. That was a fairly routine ground ball, but he just couldn't get it to stick in the glove. Might have taken his eye off it a little early, but regardless, you're going to have to work around that error. Now it's Matt Chapman. And Boog, I'd say he's due. Here's the pitch. Runner breaks for a third. There's a ball. Throw. Save. How big a deal is that walk? I don't think it's a big deal because if you pitch to the previous hitter with the power he has, he can hit a home run. I think it was a calculated walk. We'll see how it pays off here. On the ground to third. Throws to second for one. What a double play that was. Inning over. Well, we can never overstate it. Pitcher's best friend right there. Double play, gets out of the jam, saves some pitches. Welcome back. Here's Manuel Margot. Look for him to hit behind the runner, perhaps shoot it to the right side. Hardliner. Jaquez makes the catch. One down. Well, this is a big win on the road and going extras into 10. Uh, so hard to pull those out, but I think this team did a great job of keeping the crowd out of the ball game late. When you can do that, it kind of calms everything down, keeps the adrenaline of the opposing team down a bit, and you can steal a win and get out of here happy. A 7-5 final score in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire...